Peterson thinks that the best way to uh, interact with a cult that tries to be state religion with some kind of egregore is to make a stand and to expose yourself. And uh, I am not sure if I agree with that. So basically, he is fighting a culture war in an ineffectual way, I think. Uh, there is also a deeper level. Um, Peterson thinks that growing up consists in making a sacrifice. And uh, this sacrifice is self-actualization. He would like to be happy, but can he cannot afford to be happy because, it, because it's incompatible with being an adult and doing the things an adult has to do. And his sacrifice is incomplete. He has not sacrificed his need for self-actualization. And that's why he appears to be so bitter, right? Uh, if he had made the sacrifice, he wouldn't be bitter. Wouldn't which, be which sacrifice? Sacrifice of self-actualization? Uh, yes. So, Meaning? Uh, he would become a priest. He would have that serene state of somebody who has not lost anything because he doesn't need anything, what he doesn't have. Right? This, uh, if you look at the archetypal priest, it's a person that is serene, that is smiling because they are at peace with themselves and the world. And they might be suffering momentarily because the uh, unbelievers crucify him, but apart uh, from the moments of uh, acute pain um, or um, the moments of compassion for their flock when they are involved uh, in, in their uh, dealings with the right. world and try to help them and fail at doing so because not all things can be helped, right? The priest is supposed to be okay with what he does. And Peterson is not okay with what he does. He is suffering because he uh, has retained his identity. That the one that he thinks he has uh, sacrificed, he hasn't. Wait, yes, okay. basically. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand this. So you're saying that he has an identity, and because he's holding on to it, it's like a want, and you should get rid of your wants, and then you'll be placid and serene and tranquil. Yes. So he basically he is doing something that he has not fully internalized himself. He is uh, expressing the tension between what he thinks he needs to be doing and what he does, uh, what he feels uh, would reward him for doing. The, right? He he feels pain in doing what he does. And uh, there is, of course, this uh, other thing that uh, he is acting on certain incentives in this game. And the question is, uh, are these incentives completely pure? So he is a publicist that is filling a certain niche, a certain vacuum. He is uh, uh, trying to give people values. Uh, he is trying to uh, project an authority in a time that needs authority. And he might not be uh, projecting exactly the right authority or fitting authority, but he is interacting with the fact that the millennials are the first generation since uh, uh, the uh, post-war generation that are authoritarian again, right? Every generation after World War II was liberal. Because Why are we authoritarian? Um, I think that the millennials became authoritarian because they realized that liberalism has failed them. It has failed at uh, saving the environment, at uh, uh, offering resources and self-actualization to everybody. So now we need to go to some authoritarian system where we control what people think and feel and how they interact. And uh, the uh, result uh, of the world, the insufficiency of the world, is no longer seen as the uh, absence, uh, the result of the absence of freedom, right? The post-war generations saw that the problems of the world were that we didn't have enough freedom. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We needed to uh, free individuals. For instance, we, we should have uh, the ability to engage freely in love and sexuality to uh, self-actualize. And the problems that we had in relationship was because we didn't have enough freedom in our relationships. And now? And now uh, the, uh, the results of injustice in the world are seen by many millennials as the result of a surplus of freedom. Well, oppression you know, is the I, flip yeah. side You're of referring freedom. to the, the, the and that's the, that's the privilege left or the yes, social so justice. Side. Yes, it's, okay. yes. So it's basically the uh, the now the issue that we need to fight is privilege. We don't need uh, and privilege is a surplus of freedom. And if we can remove the privilege, as a result, we get less oppression in a more just world. Right. But it also means basically we have to limit the self-expression of the uh, of people. And this is opposed to liberalism. What if they say that, hey, we just want freedom for ourselves. You have freedom. All we're doing is trying to promulgate freedom just to those yeah, who are on the oppressed the, end. Yeah, then there would be liberals. There would be people like, for instance, uh, the gay movement in the 1970s, which said uh, you have freedom to marry, for instance, and we also want to marry. 
Right. But uh, what uh, social justice is, for instance, uh, telling limited. people, uh, if you are uh, heterosexual, you cannot kiss in public because that's heteronormative. I see, I see. And I it's see. insulting those people which cannot kiss in public. Right. And uh, if you have an ability uh, to do a certain thing, you cannot uh, construct uh, a life around this ability because that's ableist. Right. So instead, we have to level the playing field. We have to build a society that gives a uh, level playing ground to those which have no ability. And uh, this leads uh, into some apparent contradictions, but ideologies have no difficulties with this contradiction. And the main issue is that the rationality of this liberal system is still a rationality that, even though it's internally logically logical, is a rationality that doesn't serve most people. And it seems to be something that Peterson doesn't seem to understand. You cannot force people to abide by the logic of a system by which they lose. Right? Why should they play a game by which they lose? Why should you create criteria for getting a job that require the equivalent of uh, an aptitude test that you fail? And if that job is the only way that you can feed your kids, right? Uh, if, for instance, becoming a, a STEM scientist or a machine learning engineer is one of the main ways that you can have social mobility in late stage capitalism in the US. Uh, and you limit this to a certain subset of the population. Isn't that massively unfair to most people in society? And so why should most people uh, subscribe to the criteria by which you give out these jobs? And so you will find yourself with a movement. What's the answer? What's the alternative? I don't know what the answer is, but I think that, uh, so uh, I suspect that Peterson is not going to solve the problem. Right? He is telling these people, you are wrong when you try to change the criteria for how we give out jobs in STEM. But uh, he uh, is not addressing the reason why they want to change the criteria. And the reason is, once more? Uh, the reason is social inequality. The reason is that they don't know how to feed their children. 